Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our midweek service. It's good to be with you guys tonight. Although we're taping this on uh, Tuesday night, ready for Wednesday night uh, air, airing, uh, we, we, uh, we're having some strange weather, aren't we? It's 60 degrees this morning when people got up, and it's dropped over 30 degrees today. I think it's about 25 or 26 right now. And so uh, it's probably good that we're taping tonight, tomorrow night. Who knows what's going to happen? But that's Missouri, but not just Missouri. The, the whole United States is getting some up and down weather like that. But it's good to see you guys tonight. And I want to talk about something. I want to give you the scripture first. It's found in John chapter 3, verse 3. This is a scripture that I use an awfully lot. And probably if I could pick the second most important scripture in the Bible, other than John 3, 16, it might be John 3, 3, 3, when Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he shall not enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come to you tonight, God, to worship you, Lord. Lord, just to receive what you have for us in your word. And God, that it may strengthen us, encourage us, and draw us near to you. Lord, help us to be the person that you call us to be. We'll give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to talk tonight about starting over, getting a fresh start. Uh, putting the past behind us and starting new. And I, I can remember several times in my life that uh, as a boy and as an adult, there's been times that uh, uh, you just like to be able to start over, just wipe the slate, slate clean and start over again. And uh, sometimes things uh, they pile up on you and you say, if I could just start over, uh, I could take care of these things. And... Uh, so that's, that's what I want to talk about tonight. And uh, excuse me just a second, I forgot to turn my phone off. Amen, I apologize. I, I should tell everybody out there in your homes and everything to turn your phones off, and I forgot to do it here. Forgot, forgot that I even had it on me. And so as we're starting to talk about oh, starting over again, Israel had that. In ancient Israel, they had a time called the Year of Ju Jubilee found in in Leviticus 25, verses 8 through 17, you can read about there, and every 50 years they got a fresh start. Their, uh, their bills were wiped clean. They owed nobody anything. If they had uh, land, it was paid off. Uh, it, it was just a pretty good thing. People looked to that year of Jubilee, and you hear, you've heard that referred to quite a bit. All debts canceled. Wouldn't you love that today? If, if you could just say, hey, you know, Starting tomorrow, all debts are canceled. I owe, owe nobody anything. I, all my property is free and clear. A fresh start in life. Well, Jesus spoke about that. And he, he wanted uh, everybody to know that they, they could have a starting over time. When we talk about being born again, we're, when we are born the first time as a uh, flesh and blood human being. A, we're born in the flesh. And... Uh, if that's all we ever do, then we're missing something. But when he talks about it starting over again, uh, you have to be born again, not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Because it's this spirit, it's the inner you that's going to live for all of eternity. And that inner you needs to uh, uh, come to a place where you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you're starting over again. Amen. So I want to make this as clear as I possibly can. Simply this, and I, and I preach this uh, several times a year because I don't want people to think that they can just get into heaven because they choose to get into heaven. No, the Bible is very clear about that. If you're saved, when you die, you'll go to heaven. If you're lost, you go to a place called hell for all of eternity. Every person will live for eternity, either with God or without God, uh, either in the place to where the Bible describes a place of eternal punishment and, ter and total separation from God, or a place of glory and wonderful things, and, and you know, and, and the simple choice of life, uh, you want good or you want bad, I think we'd choose the good. Uh, the, the Bible speaks in the Old Testament, Joshua, he said, I set before you this day the opportunity to choose, choose death or choose life. He said, I encourage you to choose life, amen, that both you and your seed may, may live. And so that's what God is still giving us that option today. And when I think about that, if we begin to choose life, as you as an individual, 
no matter what age you are right now, if you choose life, choose to serve God, you're passing, going to pass that down from generation to generation to generation. And it thrills to me to know that by me choosing Christ, I can affect my children. I can affect my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. Because I don't want to just love them for this time that we're here on this earth, but I want to spend all of eternity with my family. So therefore, I want to choose the way of God so that they may see that in my life and decide to follow that also. Amen. By doing good and doing the right thing will not get you to heaven. It takes more than that. Going to church will not get you into heaven. Joining the church and being baptized will not get you into heaven. Knowing the preacher, living a godly life, having godly parents, godly grandparents, godly neighbors, that's not going to get you into heaven. Jesus said, except a man be born again. That, that individual person, you have to do it as an individual. You have to come to Christ. Somebody can't do it for you. Jesus said this in John 10, 1, or in, in, uh, in the 10th chapter. Uh, he said that, or John 10, 1, he said this. He said, I'm the door. And if anybody tries to get into, any, uh, into heaven any, any other way, they're the same as a thief and a robber. So if you try to come up with some kind of idea how you can get into heaven, maybe write a book on it, sell, sell a book, you know, this is how you get to heaven. Well, if it's not according to the Word of God, it'll not, not pass, it'll fail, and you'll miss heaven yourself. Amen. Jesus said this, or the Bible says this in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, There's no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. And John uh, 6, uh, what is it, 6, uh, no, John 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. Amen. That's the, that's the only way. So, so a simple formula for being born again or to be saved is this. John 6, says that no man, Jesus speaking, no man can come to me except the Father which sent me draw him. Amen. And then they said, Jesus, you can't come to me for salvation unless my Father draws you. We could also say unless the Spirit draws you. Because there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And when that Spirit reaches out and draws you, well, how are you going to know when that happens? Well, you're going along in life doing your thing, and all of a sudden you begin to feel differently about your journey of life. And you begin to see and to realize, you know what? I need to turn my life around. You know what that is? That's God's Spirit beginning to deal with your spirit. As you feel that Spirit intensifying in your being and you get more unsettled in your way of life and uh, starting to realize, you know what, I need to change my life. I need, I need to come to, that's God calling you. That's God giving you the invitation, amen. So, so that's great. That's God's invitation. God's saying, I want to save you. God's saying, I want to change your life. I thank God so much that God gave that opportunity to me as an 18-year-old boy. And he drew me him and he changed my life. And he saved my soul, amen. But no man, that, I mean, that's everybody. No man can help except the invitation from the Father, amen. And then Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means when you feel the Spirit of God drawing you and you want to come to Christ, you've got to lay it all down. Simply repent of your sins. Ask Christ to forgive you your sins and to come into your life. That word repentance simply means this. It means you want to ask forgiveness for your sins. I'm sorry for my sins, but not just being sorry. I want to turn away from them. I don't want them to no longer be any part of my life. I want to begin a new life right now. I'm through with that old life. And you feel that in your heart, and that's the desire of your heart. Amen. So re repentance has to be genuine. Amen. Not just, a, you know, I'm sorry for my sins. You know, I'm Sorry, I got caught. That's what a lot of people feel. They're sorry they got caught. But uh, repentance means to genuinely turn away. Amen. Luke, uh, Romans 10 and 9 says this, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the mouth, uh, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want to go back and look at those two verses again that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart. Amen. You know what it tells me? It tells me you've come to a place to where you're not ashamed of Christ. 
You're not ashamed of becoming a Christian. That thou shalt confess. I, I confess I'm a child of God. I confess Jesus is my Lord. Amen. And I believe that in my heart. Amen. I, I have accepted that. That's who I am now. I'm not changing. I'm not going back. That's a, I'm a new person. I'm a new person right now because I've, I've confessed him. And I've believed in my heart. And then the ninth verse, or the tenth verse. For with the heart man believeth unto salvation. It is your faith, your belief that reaches out that grants you the salvation. Amen. The Bible says it's by faith are we saved, not by works. Our faith in Christ, our faith in believing Him and believing in Him. For with the heart man believeth or has faith unto righteousness, right standing with God, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, standing up and saying, does anybody want to testify? I remember the old testimony service we used to have in church in years gone by. People would want to stand up and say, I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I'm glad my sins are washed away. I'm glad I'm born again. I'm glad I'm a child of God. I'm not ashamed of it, but I am glad. And I confess it before all of the world. Amen. Believing that Christ is the Son of God. I believe that. The Savior of the world. Confess him to men, not ashamed. Amen. Take the stand. Amen. I like what Paul said in Romans 1, 16. He said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. Amen. And uh, so this is the first thing. Are you saved? If we, if we don't get this, we're talking about starting over tonight. Well, if you don't start over with your spiritual connection to God, the rest of it is good, but it's not going to really do a, a whole lot of good. In, in, in January, we always start out with a New Year's resolution. Well, that's okay. It's okay. It's, uh, pe people want to put it down. Ah, people just do that year after year. Well, maybe some of them really get, get it done. And that'd be good. That'd be good. I hope they do. So, but if we don't get our, our connection with God right, then the rest of them are not going to be as effective as what they could be in your ability to be able to start over. Because when you start over, you're going to begin a new lifestyle. When I got saved, 18-year-old boy, you know what? I quit doing the things I used to do. I quit going to the places. I quit uh, acting like I used to act. I quit uh, doing a lot of the things that I used to do. And I became a new person. Started going to church. I never went to church before that. I started going to church every time the door was open. You know why? Because I was hungry to learn more about God. I was hungry to get into a place where I could feel His presence and His touch. And, uh, and if you're a Christian, you're going to want to do that. Amen. You won't live like you used to. Amen. You know, sinners live like sinners, don't they? Amen. That's pretty, pretty simple. Somebody said, what do sinners do? They sin. Amen. What do Christians do? They act like Christ. Christians should act like Christ. If you know some Christians that aren't acting like Christ, just pray for them. Because they need to get their act together. If you are walking around hating people, you're not acting like Christ. If you walk around cheating people, you're not acting like Christ. If you walk around doing bad things, you're not acting like Christ. Christians should act like Christ did when he walked upon this earth. So fall in love with Christ. And the things that, that Christ did, begin to live like him and he told us to follow his teachings, amen, and he told us to study. How are we going to know what his teachings are if we don't study? Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How are you going to teach somebody else if you don't study this word and know the correct translation of it? Rightly dividing the word of truth, amen. There's a lot of teaching going on in the world today that is totally anti-God. But yet, society has accepted it as just, it's okay. Well, it's not okay. I'm not trying not to get into it tonight, but there are so many things going on in the world today that, let's back up 40 years ago. Just almost everybody would have known that these things that are going on today are totally not right. Well, today they've been accepted by, by society. They've been accepted by government. They've been accepted by our schools. And unfortunately, some churches are accepting them too. It doesn't matter if the whole world accepts sin, the church better take a stand. And these things, like I said, I'm trying not to get into them tonight. Amen. They're, they're sin is sin. And I think you got a pretty good idea what that might be. Amen. So as we, 
begin to live like Christ. Believe in prayer. Your prayer is your opportunity to contact heaven. Amen. It's your opportunity to call your new home. Amen. Praise God. Someday you're going to a place called heaven. God, your Father, is there. He said you can call. Matter of fact, he said it said you can enter boldly into his throne room and bring our needs and, and our petitions and lay them down at his feet and believe that God is going to take care of you. Amen. So believe in prayer. I pray because I believe God's going to hear. I pray because I believe he's a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. I pray because I've seen it happen time and time again. Things that were going the wrong direction and you pray about it. And through the miracle working power of God, things begin to change. Amen. Good things begin to change. As a Christian, love him. Praise him. Worship him. Amen. This should be an everyday activity. Love him. Praise him. Worship him. Sometimes I'll, uh, Brenda and I will be wherever, whatever we're doing, and I'll just look at her and say, you know what? We are so blessed. God has blessed our lives unbelievably. I'm not talking about being filthy rich. I'm not talking about that at all, because we're not. I'm talking about the life that he has given us, the life that I dedicated to him as an 18-year-old boy, and we started living it, and it's been a long journey. We've had our ups and we've had our downs, but now that I, where I am now, and I look back, man, I thank God that he gave me the life, and I want to thank him for it, and I want to love him for it, and I want to praise him for it, and I want to worship him, and just let him know that I am appreciated. Amen. So we need to attempt to live like Christ, and and that's love God with all your heart and your soul and your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Those two scriptures right there are the gospel in a nutshell. If you can love God with all your heart, soul, and mind and love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. Love your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Amen. Go the extra mile. Amen. With your help. When somebody needs your help, be over, over uh, joyous to be able to, to help them. And, and you know, when you see good things happening uh, in people's lives because of something you did, that makes you feel good. It makes you know you did what Christ would do uh, when somebody calls and needs a ride and you don't make an excuse why you can't, but you say, I'll be right there. When somebody need, needs the extra help financially, and I heard a, uh, a young preacher preach this years, years ago. He said, if somebody comes to you and says that you, they have need, of uh, something in their life. I said, you've got a $20 bill in your pocket and you tell them to go away and we'll pray for you and hope that God takes care of you. You're a hypocrite. If you've got the means to help somebody, go ahead and help them. Amen. Go ahead and help them. Amen. I know there's limits on that. I know, I know there's an understanding of helping the right people. I understand that. But don't be so ready to automatically say no. Be ready many times to say, you know what? God has blessed me, now I'm gonna bless you. And, and I haven't loaned money for years and years and years, amen. People come to me and say, Pastor, can I borrow $20 or can I borrow $100? And I'll say, no, but I'll give it to you as a gift because what God has given to me to give to you, he will give it to me again. He will replenish. When you begin to plant seeds out of the resources that God has given you, you will find that those resources will come back to you. Luke uh, 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. Amen. Shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same ability, the same way that you give, it'll be given back to you. So if you give a little, you're going to get a little back. If you give a lot, God is going to bless you. Amen. So go the extra mile with your help. Live as pure as you possibly can. I know none of us are going to be squeaky clean and spotless. I know none of us are not perfect. But just because we're not, not perfect, does that mean that we should not try? That we shouldn't strive to be more like Christ? If, if I, uh, uh, you know, let me, let me think of something. If I... Uh, I'm having trouble in an area in my life. And uh, if I just accept it, it's always going to be there. But if I make up my mind, you know what? That area of my life as a child of God is not pleasing in God's sight. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start working on changing it right now. Amen. Be as much like Christ as you possibly can. Be as holy as you possibly can. I like this scripture found in 1 Thessalonians 
5.22. When Paul is telling us a lot of different things, he says, abstain from the very appearance of evil. Stay away from that which is ungodly. You don't need it in your life. You need to get away from it and stay away from it as, as, as well as you possibly can. Make church attendance a part of your regular life. Amen. When a Christian gets saved, and I've heard so many people say this, and they're, they're correct. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. You're absolutely right. Amen. But water doesn't make a fish a fish. But for some reason, that fish likes to be in the water. And going to church doesn't make a Christian a Christian. But for some reason, when we gather together as the body of Christ, we begin to sense the feeling of His presence. We gather together in corporate worship, and all of a sudden the presence of God fills the sanctuary we are, and we feel His touch, and we feel His presence. Amen. So make up your mind. Church is going to become a part of your life. What are, you, what are you going to do Sunday? What do you mean what am I going to do Sunday? What have I done every Sunday for the last 54 years? I've went to church. Amen. I went to church because that's who I am and that's what I do. Amen. And I'm reaping the results, the benefits from it right now. Amen. Get involved in some kind of a ministry. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a preaching or teaching or singing. There's a ministry that where you just help people. Maybe you just call people and encourage people. Give somebody a ride. Take somebody to the doctor. Whatever it might be, there's people out there that need something that you have. Maybe they just need your kind voice to call them and to encourage them. By the, I missed you last week. I noticed you weren't at church. Are you okay? Don't begin to criticize and don't put them down. But are you okay? I just want to call. I'm concerned. I hope you're not sick. Hope you're feeling well. Hope everything is going good in your life. And, and if there's something going wrong that they want to talk to you about, they'll talk to you about it. Amen. They'll let you know. And maybe there's something in that that you can, you can help them with. Amen. So get involved in the ministry and make that commitment to serve. Amen. I want to be a servant of Almighty God. I want to serve my fellow man. Amen. As we begin to work on ourselves to improve ourselves, when you work on your spiritual life, James 4 and 8 says, if you'll draw near to God, God will draw near to you. Amen. Man, that's a simple, simple equation. God and man, the closer we walk together, pretty soon we're going to come together. You are going to be one with God. You're going to begin to think like God, begin to act like God, begin to do things like God did because God will come near to you. You need to work on your physical life. Amen. Now your physical life is not going to get you to heaven. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that God, that physical effort, er, exercise profiteth little, but spiritual exercise profiteth a lot. Amen. So, but if, if you get in control of your health the best that you can, uh, you're going to feel better. And if you're feeling better, uh, you're going to be able to do more into the kingdom of God. Amen. Maybe things like uh, getting control of your appetite or quitting smoking or don't drink uh, alcohol, don't do drugs. And, and uh, uh, th these things, a lot of them you're going to need help on. You're going to need to call on God and say, God, I need a miracle in my life, and I'm believing for that miracle. Help me to quit doing this, this addiction that's got a hold of me. Amen. Terrible, terrible event took place in, uh, in uh, an area just north of here around the Russellville, California area. And, and the best I know about it, and you, you heard about it, I'm sure you have, maybe, maybe you even know more details than I do, but my understanding was that some grown teenagers, they're 20, 18, 19, 20 years old, were playing a game in the yard, drinking and doing drugs. That's my, my understanding. I don't know for sure. But something went wrong with the game, and one of them got mad, pulled out a gun, and began to shoot at the others. Shot his own brother, and his brother died. What good is alcohol, and what good is drugs? That young man will live with that his entire life, because maybe drugs or maybe alcohol affected him to, to do that stupid thing. You know, we need to, as, as a Christian, these things shouldn't even be thought of as being a part of our life. Amen. God will take that away from you. He'll liberate you from that. You need to work on your financial life. Because you know what? Because God wants you blessed. God really does want you blessed. He wants you to improve in your finances. Amen. It's one thing, uh, you know, if you're making a decent uh, living and you, you're not 
uh, doing well, well, learn to budget. That's, that's a nasty word, budget. That means not just to live within your means, but if you could possibly do it, live below your means, and that'll put a savings away for a rainy day. Amen. Whatever that uh, savings might be. My first employer when I got out of the Army, Don Ferguson, drywall contractor. I, I tell you, that guy was as tight as a bark on a tree, but he had money. Amen. And he, he told all his employees that if you'll watch your pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. Just think about that. Amen. If you're concerned about spending a little bit of change, you're not going to have to worry about spending too many dollars. And, and that's a good thing. Amen. Just learn to get control uh, of yourself on this. Start watching that. Become wise with your spending. You should look around for bargains. Amen. Um, if, if you're not making enough, seek God for a better job. If you need a better job, God will give it to you. Amen. I, I know uh, uh, a couple of cases uh, in, in our church. Last week, got a report. Somebody came in, and, and this young lady, she began to testify and tell about how uh, she got the job she wanted. Amen. Job she went to school for. It, it's, it's closer to her. It probably pays about the same. I didn't ask her how much it pays, but I'm sure it pays about the same or maybe more. But it's closer to her house. And that means right there that that's less money, less expense to get to work, uh, less car repairs, uh, more time at home with your family. Amen. Isn't that great? Isn't that great how God is going to bless you if you turn it over to God? Amen. And uh, if you need a better job, begin to ask, God, I, I need a job, a job that's better than the one I've got. And, and God's got those jobs out there. God's got them for you. If you'll start paying your tithes, you will find out that uh, uh, your life will begin to run better because God will take the 90% that you have left over after you give 10% and he'll make it go so much further. Amen. I, uh, my wife and I are doing okay right now. I'll just say it that way. We're doing okay. Uh, ever since I got saved, I started paying tithes. And, and a lot of times it's kind of tight. I'll be honest with you, raising a family, it, sometimes it's tight and you don't always have what you want and, and a little, little bit, not enough money to go around, it seems like, but I always kept, kept paying my tithe. And we've reached a place in life right now where it seems like we're reaping the seeds that, that we've sown. And they're coming back to us and God is bringing blessing in upon our life and God will do that for you. I hope, you don't have to wait to be as old as we are, but if you'll get a hold of yourself financially, you'll find out that the blessing of God will come in upon you at a very young, early age. Amen. So get a hold of yourself spiritually. Get a hold of yourself physically. Get a hold of yourself financially. And this is what the Apostle John told his friend in, in 3 John verse 2. You know this scripture, I'm sure. He said, Beloved, I wished above all things that thou mayest prosper, and be in health as thy soul prospers. That's a good message. That's, that's good news. I, I want you to be blessed. I, I want you to be physically uh, fit. I want you to be spiritually into it. That's what God wants for his children. Amen. God wants that for you. Amen. Sometimes if we're sick in our body, it can be a hindrance. Sometimes it's our fault. Sometimes it's not. But you can take an infirmity and turn it around and let God begin to bless it. Amen. There's a, well, she's not a young lady anymore. She's probably about my age. I'd say that this lady is probably in her 70s. Johnny Erickson Tonham. Many of you might recognize that name. It was a 17-year-old girl, lived on the Chesapeake Bay in Virginia, and she jumped off of a cliff, dove into the water, as she's done many, many times before. But this time, she hit a rock. She hit a rock, and she became a paraplegic from her neck down. She has lived her entire life from 17 years of age, a paraplegic. She could have let that uh, make her very, very bitter. It could have brought her to a place to where despair and giving up, wanting to commit suicide, and life's not worth a living. But she decided to challenge that, that, uh, that injury and turn it into something good. And she committed her life to God. And, and she's made statements like, she said, you know what? Uh, if, if God, if I hadn't had this happen to me, I wouldn't be as close to God as what I am today. She's written books. She's sang songs. She's a, she's a well-known speaker that travels around all over the world and speaks to people and encourages them that there could be a worse thing happen in your life and there is a better day. So don't let your finances, don't let your uh, anything like this bring devastation into your life. Get control of your spiritual life. Draw near to God. 
get control of your uh, physical life. Amen. Take care of yourself. Get control of your financial life. And let God begin to bless you in all of these ways. Beloved, I wish above all these things that thou mayest prosper and be in health as thy soul prospers. You want to start over? Praise God. Today is a good day to start over. No better time than right now to start over. I want to pray a prayer tonight. You may, you may be saved, just feel, you know what? I need to start over. Well, you can do it. Or you may not be saved. You may need Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and you can do that too. So as we pray together, you pray with me. Fathers, we come to you today. We thank you. Give you praise, give you honor, and give you glory. You're the great almighty God that can take a, a life that seems to be in shambles and change it and turn it around and put it on a brand new path. I pray for that one that may be listening tonight that's not sure if they're saved or not. God, help them to reach out to you right now. Just ask you to forgive them of their sins, come into their life, and make them a new creature, and let them start that new life right now in Jesus. If that's you, just call on him and ask him. For Christians who may be struggling in certain areas, just come to God and say, God, help me, Lord, to get my life in tune, to get started in the right direction, whether it's physically, spiritually, financially, whatever it is, God, help me, Lord, to rise up and to begin to start over and let this become a brand new day. Amen. Praise God. So there's no better time than right now to start your life in Christ. No better time than right now to start new in Christ and let God begin to bless you the way that God wants to bless you. Amen. Come out and be with us in service. Amen. I, I thank God this pandemic is, is getting better. It is, it is uh, decreasing in great numbers. So hopefully soon you'll feel free to come back and to be with us in the house of God. It, I'm glad you're able to listen to us uh, on the internet. And I know some of you live miles away. And I know some of you physically can't get out of your house. But if you can, begin to think about that. I believe God is opening up the doors, opening up the opportunities that churches once again might begin to fill up. Our church seems to be growing weekly. Amen. And we haven't had any problem with COVID in this church for quite some time. And I want to thank God for that. I thank God. I believe 2022 is going to be a great year. I believe we're going to move forward and see great things begin to take place in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope to see you soon. Come out and see us Sunday, 9 o'clock for coffee and donuts, 9.30 Sunday school, and 10.30 morning worship and 6 o'clock uh, evening worship. God bless you. Love you. See you soon. Amen.